interview room once you checking in the tops here how you all doing all right let's begin let's have a chat about the fact that i want to interview the best fighters in the world and that's that had a lot of guests from everywhere all across the globe fighters tell me uh, greetings everyone, Mudzi here from Muay Thai Interviews. Uh, my next guest is a FIFO worker at Tell for Gold, working a 2 on 2 off roster. But when he's not working digging for gold, he calls Pattaya home where he is an advisor to Prem Busaraba Von Wongs, the manager of Fairtex Gym, uh, where he regularly accom- accompanies the fighters to shows when Prem can't make it. I'm joined by Jared Scrimger. How are you, buddy? Yeah, good, thanks Sal. Uh, thanks for having me, Muds. No, that was good, mate. A bit of a tongue twister there, Busaraba Von Wongs, but I'm, I'm glad I got it right. <laughs> <laughs> Plenty of practice, I think. <laughs> mate, it sounds like you've got a uh, pretty sweet gig going on. Um, can you give us a rundown of, of how you got into Muay Thai and then how that all led into becoming Prem's advisor and, and involved with uh, the Fairtex brand? Yeah, sure. Um, it's probably about six years ago I... Uh... Sitting at home, I just finished two weeks of work, and I, um, when I was a younger guy, I, I always idolised watching the Odson Clive play, and I thought maybe two weeks off I might just jet over to Thailand and have a bit of a journey over there and, and sort of uh, suss it out. So um, next day I jumped on a plane to Bangkok for about a week, and I thought, well, I wonder where this Fairtex gym is. So uh, I jumped in a taxi and went down there for um, for a week to stay there. Um, I booked in and uh, spoke to the manager there at the time, which was uh, Ted. Yeah, I mean, Ted Akuno. He's cool. He was quite a good guy. He was. Uh, he introduced me around the place, and he said, "Right, uh, do you want to train?" And I'm like, "Yeah, sure. I'll I'll try it out." Uh, I spent a week there, and I was befriended by one of the trainers. His name was Rambo. Yeah. He was uh, really really good to me. Um, he, he, he was sort of a gentle giant, no, he's, he was pretty hard on a lot of people there, training and whatnot, but uh, I don't know what sort of gelled with us two, but we became pretty good friends. So um, I stayed there for a week. Um, Fairtex back then was quite different, it was, wasn't a fighter's gym as such, so there's probably only two or three fighters there, it was Yod, I think, uh, Gao and uh, Eklund Jong. So it was quite quiet. Um, I spent a week there and then I went back to work and but for that next two weeks at work I was just in a haze. I just wanted to go back to Thailand and and learn more. So I went back the next swing, uh, my next break off, and uh, Rambo said to me, you you should stay back and train longer. And I'm like, okay, I, I might just do this. Um, went back to Australia again and I gave notice. Um, I took six months off work. And I went back to Thailand. Um, it was quite hard. I was I was a bigger guy back then. I just finished playing rugby, so I was around 108 kilos. So I went back and I think I must have shed about 30 odd kilos within two months. There, it was it was good for my body. Really, really good. I enjoyed it. Yeah. And um, after that, I, I I guess um, I sort of this I hadn't really made up my mind. I was like still 35 years old, so. There's no way I was ever going to fight. It was just too late for me for back then. So never too late, mate. I, I of, yeah, it's, it's more of an enthusiasm thing and um, something to to sort of make me a bit more healthy. And and so how did that all lead into you, um, like becoming Prem's um, his advisor? Um, it, it took some time. Uh, I didn't actually know Prem for probably the first year and a half. I, I actually went there every month. So. I didn't actually know him to, for about a year and a half. Yeah. I was training there every month. Um, and he just came up to me one day and he said, hey, um, you've been here a long time. I, I, I guess we'd, I, I should know a bit more about you. And um, he, was quite, he was quite approachable. I was always sort of, uh, sort of not put off by him, but he's got a, quite a high standing in society over there. Yeah. So when he, when he spoke to me, I'm like, yeah, cool, that's nice. And he, he said, oh, we'll, we'll go for a few drinks tonight. I'm like, no, that's not a bad idea. I'll, I'd like to do that, so we sort of hit it off. Um, we're not that uh, there's not that much uh, age difference between both of us. I think I've got five years on him, so um, yeah, we, we hit it off really good. We, we became good friends, and uh, a couple of years later, I was uh, one of the best men for his wedding, and uh, things sort of evolved where he'd, he'd ask more about like Australia, and and this is where Yod comes in, uh, fights in Australia, and yeah. Um, 
it was it was really happening there. So um, it took time for myself and Prem to be really good friends, and to this day we're still best friends. Um, yeah, it is it, it is sort of hard to get your head around to sort of think that you could come from Australia and and go to Thailand and and sort of befriend someone like him. Yeah, um, I guess be lucky. Yeah. I met Yod Sinclair once, and he probably thought I was a dickhead because I was just like a hell little fanboy. Saw saw him in the gym. I was like, "Oh, Yod Sinclair, Yindi T Day Rujak Cup on," and I said it like twice. And he just like looked at me and nod. And I was just think afterwards, I was just like, "I'd probably look like the biggest dickhead then." <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it's, um, he is a he's not a, he's a very profound man. He he he, he trains in a in a uh, sort of a, a universal gym that has a lot of foreign customers. So. Pretty much all the ties that, that train and fight at Fairtex, all the workers there, they are friendly for foreigners. So it, it's not a matter of them being rude to them. They have to be nice, and they are, and they are generally nice people anyway. Yeah. But Yod still loves the attention like I do. I know it's <laughs> yeah. very well. <laughs> well, that's good because he gets it every time you, you see him hitting pads. There's about like 10 people standing on the side of the ring. I was one of them just sitting there without with your phone taking videos. I was still one of them. I am still one of them. I think he's amazing to watch when he trains. Oh, mate, everything just looks effortless. Looks effortless. Yeah. Um, and Fairte- Fairtex has recently undergone a massive upgrade because um, I remember a while ago when I was there, it only had uh, two rings. Now it's got, I think, four, and it's got a full-sized uh, MMA cage. Can you give us a rundown of all the um, of the expansion that's taken place and, and what used to be there um, prior to everything that's there now? Yeah, well, I guess it's all down to Prem, really. Um, when he took over from Ted, uh, he had a lot of foresight about the gym. He, he wanted to make it an international-style gym and a fighter's gym. So in able to do all this, he needed to expand. Um, unfortunately for the people in the sports club at Fairtex, they lost two tennis courts. Yeah. Uh, that was our game. Um, that's since where we've put the MMA cage and extended two more. Boxing rings, so now we went from we went from four rings to six. Six. Yeah, and it's um, it's quite a it's quite an amazing design how they've done it with, uh, with all the drainage and they're always trialing new uh, canvas and whatnot. But yeah, that's that's all pretty tacked up. The MMA cage is MMA cage is really good. It's it's surrounded by about I think maybe about twenty uh, heavy bags. Yeah. And behind the MMA cage, we've got just a, a place where you can roll for the uh, BJJ class. It's quite a big open area. And opposite that now, we've got like the strength and conditioning where the MMA guys and the uh, Nakamai go in, to, go in there and they, they do their weights and they'll do their lifting and whatnot there. It's, um, it is a really well set up area. Uh, a lot of thought went into the process of building and designing it. So... Um, and, and even with the tie way of manufacturing things, we, we know how uh, they might sort of cut corners to get things built. Yeah. This was built very, very, very well, and there was no one injured during the process either. <laughs> very, very strange. So uh, so maybe they did they did some take fives and signed on to the JHAs then, eh? <laughs> Not. <laughs> I, I would stand there and I'd watch welders hanging on eaves, upside down, stick welding lines, and I'm like, I, I just can't believe this is happening. But yeah, it, it, it all went safely, and no one was harmed in the building of Fairtex, luckily. <laughs> I was going to say, because it looks like there's been no expense spared, and, and you're right, like the quality looks really good, because I mean, if you, well, let's face it, Thailand being Thailand, if you go and look at some houses or some other buildings, they don't exactly look like the uh, the best of quality, but, but Prem looks like he's really done his homework and, and like got... Top notch. Yeah, a lot of the, a lot of the ring. Well, the ring was built by Fairtex. So, oh, sorry, the cage was built by Fairtex. The rings, all the metalwork. Uh, there wasn't really much that was outsourced to uh, build it, like uh, except for say the mats, which were Dolomir. Yeah. And they were so expensive. Mm. God knows how much they cost, but generally it was built from the ground up, and and with uh, Fairtex employees from from uh, Bangkok. Yeah, okay. Um, and like, yeah, as mentioned about Prem, he is the big boss of Fairtex. So would you mind giving us a rundown of how and, and where it all started? Yeah, I think it was around 1971. Uh, Fairtex wasn't actually Fairtex back then. I'll let you in on a little secret. Um, 
is actually called fair priced textiles. So that's where you get fair text from. It's fair priced textiles. So I think back in the day, then uh, they were making boxing equipment like uh, I think uh, I think of boxing shorts and wraps. Not really the gloves, and it wasn't a fighters' gym back then. Yeah. So I think yeah, it was around thirty years ago. I think the anniversary is coming up soon. So seventy-one. Uh, I think a few late years later, Mr. Wong, uh, Philip, uh, his name uh, is Prem's father. He set up the first gym in Yannawa or back in Bangkok somewhere. Yeah. Um, and this is where really the start of Muay Thai happened. Um, I think we've still got one current trainer who was actually a fighter back at that gym, which is uh, Crew Sisom. Uh, and since then, his son has been at Fairtex since. So um, it's a long journey from there. Uh, I think they moved from that gym to Samut Pakam, where the factory is. Um, that gym was going really well. A lot of ties trained out of there. Um, it was really opposite to what. Betex hot areas. It was in the heartland of, of Bangkok. It was it was wasn't very uh, common to see a, a round eye walking around that area. So a lot of international students went there to get away from places like Pattaya and and just go there and train their asses off. Yeah. Um, which was really good. Um, I did go there to train for probably a couple of years for a week at a time. I I enjoyed it because I trained with uh, Nong Tung. Um, amazing person to train with. Uh, she's a it's a story in itself with her, yeah. and I'm just so happy that she's uh, lived a good life with Fairtex as well. So, um, but yeah, it it's since recently closed down. Bunk Lee, uh, Long Tom has a gym in Smut Pakan that she's opened up, and everyone's sort of moved. All the trainers have now moved to Pattaya. Uh, it's it's a good move. Um, it, it wasn't particularly popular anymore in Samut Pagan. Um, yeah. So, yeah, the, the, all the resources and everything went to Pattaya, which is which is good. Um, I mean, I got sort of sick of driving to Bangkok and, and doing a few days training and, and, and going to Bangkok. I, I much prefer in the city of Sydney. <laughs> yeah. Is, um, did they also franchise it? Because there's a Fairtex in America too. Yeah, these are all um, all suppliers uh, that, that buy the rights and uh, oh, okay. yeah, um, a license to sell. Um, I don't know particularly much what's involved if if with Fairtex America or Fairtex UK. Yeah, I, I do know that um, it's not a gym as such; it's uh, pretty much a supplier. Oh, right. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Sweet as. Um, and Fairtex is home to some of the best Muay Thai fighters in the world, such as. Obviously, Yod San Klai, uh, you got Samapetch, Kompetch Lek, and also the fast, fast rising female star Stamp Fairtex. Um, Prem's obviously got a good eye when it comes to looking for talent. So, um, being close with him, what's he looking for when he is looking to sign fighters he thinks will represent the brand with integrity? Uh, generally, number one, uh, you can have as much talent in the world as you know, but if you don't have a heart to fight, you, you don't really have a future. Um, Fairtex is huge on heart. Uh, I think if you see some of the guys that we've signed, Andrew Miller, yeah, yeah, these are heart athletes, and they will go down swinging. They 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 get in that area where, okay, they're losing the fight, but they're going to come back on top of you eventually. And heart is the biggest key at Fairtex. Uh, we've got great trainers there. You're always going to learn. So you can learn the craft while you're training there, but you. Just, Generally, need a huge heart. Um, you need you need to be respectful and somewhat as well. Obviously, uh, very thankful for you know for being there, and it, it's quite a big buzz. Uh, I'm guessing being a, a Fairtex sponsored athlete. So, heart, uh, respect, and, and and you need to be talented. Obviously, you need need to be a sort of a, a decent level. Um, you you could probably start at a, a maximum entire level and, and progress up, which yeah. is uh, generally the case. But uh, we, we, we're looking for, we're an international gym, so we're looking for good athletes with heart, you know, and, and can go to the next level and fight these big name ties. And it's no secret that Yod is the most successful fighter to represent uh, the brand. Um, and he's probably, I want to 
I'm going to guess it, the longest serving um, fighter with the brand. So how, how long has Yod been with Fairtex for? Uh, I think we got him from uh, Perjindi uh, in 2005. He wasn't actually fighting for it. Like, he was fighting for Limpity, but he wasn't training. Uh, sorry, for Perjindi, but he wasn't fighting out of their gym. Yeah. He was sponsored by Perjindi, and he was still fighting out of Smut Prakan um, since 2005. Uh, he's had a retirement, some pretty ordinary injuries in the last three, four years, but that's duly him being active. I think he was the most active fighter for about three, four years. He was fighting every month, sometimes twice a month. Um, so, yeah, obviously the injuries are caught up with him somewhat. But with uh, science these days and, and better you know, medical treatment, you can prolong him. And he he doesn't want to stop fighting. He He's with one championship now, and he loves it. He, he sees a very good future in front of him. Mm. So he... Yeah, I, I could still see probably two years left in him, yeah. It's good that he got signed to one too, because I'm, I'm sure they'll probably take care of him. Um, and can I ask you a question? Was he originally an orthodox fighter when he first started that you know of? Because I, I was speaking to someone the other day, um, and we were talking about, like, because Thailand has so many Southpaw fighters, and a lot of them choose to go Southpaw, even though they can fight orthodox, because they find it um, easier to fight um, orthodox fighters in a Southpaw stance. Do you, do you know anything about that or not? Yeah, that's actually correct. He was, he was, he still is orthodox. Uh, he's predominantly strong on his right side. Um, I think his trainers got his ear when he was younger and said, "We want you to fight Southpaw," which is um, pretty confusing for the, you know, the the foreign knuckleway that no one still besides some really great guys like John Wayne yeah. know how to fight Southpaw. So, it was, I think it was generally the trickery of um, his early trainers to suggest to go to Southpaw. Um, yes, he's got a big left kick, but his right side, his right hand is still still way more stronger than his left. Um, yeah, but that's right. You're actually right on. Oh, sweet. I'll, uh, I'll let him know. Um, now, you've also got Samapetch coming up through the world rankings at a rapid pace. What's the key to marketing Fairtex fighters in a way that benefits the company, but also the fighters themselves um, seem to be very well looked after? Because, um, I mean, you, you often hear some shocking and horrible stories at other gyms and places of fighters just, you know, getting mistreated by the people in charge of them for their own greed. But Fairtex seems to have an excellent reputation and a, and a high standard, which it holds itself to. Yeah, 100%. Um, I, I, I can't comment on other gyms. I'm guessing they'd all be very similar in Thailand to Fairtex. But for us, it is family. Uh, the, Thai, the Thais actually know what the word family means in, in Thai. And it it is pretty much that um, from Mr. Wong down to Philip to uh, the fighters, the cleaners, everyone at the gym uh, are all very close. So it it doesn't matter what your role is there. It, family is uh, definitely the key there, and you'll notice that by two generations and uh, three generations of people working at Fairtex. Um, the marketing side is generally uh, yeah you you've got to be fit and strong. Um, You've got some amazing looking specimens running around the gym and fighting. Mm. Um, having a healthy win fight win loss record is also pretty handy, I guess. But um, it, it goes a, a long way in saying that respect goes a long way too. So um, marketing Fairtex is quite easy. It's a big social media machine, as you would probably notice by the Fairtex Training Center Facebook yep. site. Yep. Which is I'm one of the admins for. Um, it's a global brand, so you, it's going to come at you whether you're watching Glory, Kickboxing, One Championship, uh, Full Metal Dojo. It, it sort of markets itself on its on its good products because they are, they do make the best gloves. Yeah, they do. They do make yeah. ads. So, in in order for it to be successful, the equipment needs to be is very successful. Yeah, it's it's pretty much it. Yeah, I second the gloves, man. I don't know what what oh, I haven't got them here, but oh, the the newer style ones, the not the not the older roundy, puffy ones, the still ten ounce, but the, the next, yeah, yeah, man, the next one they're just, yeah. just so comfortable, ridiculous. Um, I cannot bring enough big GV nine gloves into Australia for Sinaji. <laughs> he he loves them so much. Oh, they're so <laughs> good, and yeah, that's another good thing. Like another way that Fairtex by um. 
just reiterates my point you know you're also um, sponsoring shows and and decent shows as well not just your little basketball court shows as well um now you've also got um stamp uh fair text who's a female muay thai and mma fighter she's quickly exploding onto the one fc scene um she's fast becoming a star how did uh how did she get discovered and does um is there any plans to actually grow the female fight team in either Muay Thai and MMA for Fairtex? Yeah, um, we're currently looking at the moment, always looking. Uh, for the females, it's predominantly we, we're looking for MMA fighters for the females. Um, that's where the money is for a female. Unfortunately, there are there are good events in Thailand for female Nak Muay, but um, going to Chiang Mai where you are is, is quite popular for the females. Yeah. There's not really that much around Bangkok and and Pattaya for a female, so generally, uh, yeah, we're looking for female. Some I think from I'll, I'll speak to Jason uh, from Fairtex and say that he's looking for wrestling and, and uh, jiu-jitsu style fighters to come to Fairtex. But that's a different story. But I'll I'll throw Jason in there. Um, Stamp was a was a great addition. Um, as with everyone, they'd all know about her. Uh, Documentary when she was a young kid about uh, Buffalo Girls. Um, just so happens that one of our trainers or two of our trainers grew up in the same town with Stamp, so they talked to her, her parents, and, and they asked if she'd like to come and try out. Yeah, uh, it was pretty hard for her early on. It was. Um, she really loves her family. She's very close to her family, so. When she moved, she was sort of a bit homesick, even though it was only an hour away. She was, she was living by herself. Um, all the all the team looked after her really well, and that's sort of what got her through. Um, but yeah, she she wasn't really active for a long time since the, her documentary. But since then, we, we 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 built her up, and we've got her a lot stronger. She's um, her physique is really amazing. But she is so strong. She. Training for her last fight, she walked down our trainers for seven rounds, which is very impressive. I've, I've never seen anything like it. But um, she, we gave her a shot to win a local title at, at Tepperset Stadium. She won that easily, uh, and she then tried out for the One Warrior Season uh, series as well. And clearly, the rest is history. There, she's gone on to uh, a first round knockout in the first MMA pro fight and. And only a couple of weeks ago, she's won the kickboxing adding weight gold. So um, it is a it's a really good story that uh, I don't think you'll see many or, or read of many people about uh, where, where she's come from, like absolute poverty, and picked at a young age, and now she's 20 and she's achieved everything. It's a mm. really good story. So uh, I guess all that homesickness is is all paid off, and there's no uh, she doesn't have any. Uh second guess or thoughts or doubts about going back home for at least not for the near future anyway no no and she's got a we've got three other girls in the gym another Thai and two English girls at the moment who are uh, not I'm not I'm not sure of the status on them but Ploy the Thai she's a sponsored uh, Nup Moi Ying and we've got two other girls from the UK um, and that, that's the, the, the training group for the um the, the MMA BJJ side for Stan, so she's got big bodies to train with, and um, she's she's amazing. I can't speak enough about her. Yeah, nice mate, nice. And with MMA fast becoming popular in Thailand, do you think it's the way of the future, or will Muay Thai always be the number one combat sports in Thailand? I, I say this with great respect to all <laughs> MMA BJJ people. Uh, no, it it. Um, while it's a necessary evil, it will never overtake <laughs> the likes of Muay Thai in Thailand. Uh, I think with uh, BJJ and uh, USC at the moment, um, we're very thankful to have one championship, which is mm. straightening all things out for martial arts, due to Asia being the homeland of uh, martial arts, and it is, it's Jiu-Jitsu, it's Muay Thai, all of that's from Asia, so... It's great. One championship really looks after that cause. Um, uh, but in Thailand, it will always be Muay Thai. Um, I, I, I can't stress that enough. Um, Thailand needs Muay Thai to uh, 
stimulate the economy, economy as, as such. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. So altogether, how many sponsored Tie Fighters, and how many sponsored foreigners um, has Fairtex got representing the brand at the moment? Uh, I think we we've got about five or six uh, foreign guys. Um, we're pretty blessed in having a really good group of uh, foreign guys. It's it's been trimmed in numbers uh, due to uh, say visas and and certain people getting injuries and certain people not fitting the bill as such. But yep. um, we've got Andrew uh, uh, Andrew from Scotland, Fabrice from France, uh, Johan from France. And we've got a French Canadian, which I've been told to say he's French Canadian, Oliver. Yeah, he's from, massive. Yeah. He's a huge dude, yeah. like ninety kilos or something. Yeah, he. You you look at him. He is a big man, a small bo- small man's body. He's uh, he's got such great technique. He's got a kick like yard, mm. but he's thirty kilos heavier. Um, that that group of foreign uh, fighters is special because. They're all signed for one championship. Um, there, there isn't a. I don't think there's any other gyms really that can say all their foreign fighters have big money contracts. So um, for that to happen to us, we're, we're very lucky. It says we're doing something right. Yeah, definitely. Because um, we built these guys as well. We didn't. We didn't necessarily. Well, with Andrew Miller, he was always destined to be quite uh, to have a great, uh, a great future. Yeah. But he was a shadow of a man when he turned up. We to us a year ago, he's now uh, he's a robot. He he has had he has no threshold for pain. His body has evolved. He's he's super strong, and it's good to see. And with Johan, um, he is the best foreign knocking weight at seventy kilos in the world, and he has been for two years. Um, it's just a uh, it's just sad. His last fight he lost uh, is pretty harsh for him. Um, a good learning experience, but. He's beaten all comers in Thailand for the last two years. He's been on Thai fight. He's been on all star fight. He's beaten good Thais. He's beaten them from Chiwatana to a uh, bunch of McGim. He's taken two of their guys out. And really, uh, he's just had one little hurdle in the way. But his next fight coming up, I'm sure he'll redeem himself. Um, he's an exciting fighter to watch. He does get a bit. Uh, uh, super aggressive sometimes. He doesn't like getting tagged that much, but uh, I'm trying to work that out of him. <laughs> but yeah, that that group of foreign knockmoy is special. Um, like I said, you 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 can't really go to many places and have your gym sponsored by big, you know, championship promotions. And but in in the the same we we've got that with our uh, ties as well. We've got Compat Lek. Uh, as he as yet he's not signed with one or a big championship uh, promotion, but that's destined to happen. He his performance at Rebellion last time that was yep. just a flawless fight. I he he actually fought that fight with a cracked rib, um, and he fought at Southpaw, which he's a orthodox fighter, and he just went out and all his left kicks landed. It was special, and I, I think. Um, with all due respect to Dave, I love Dave. I think he's one of Australia's best fighters. Definitely. Um, I don't think they knew what they were up against. We we had a very smart game plan for Compat like at Last Rebellion, and it worked perfectly good. It was great to watch. Um, uh, also in that car, I think it was Semipet, and he has really exploded in the last two years. Um, he, he fights some good fights, and... Is super exciting. He's a. Uh, I think he suffers from ADD. I, I'm absolutely sure because he's always running around the gym. He's he's full of energy. He's a great character, and I guess that's what puts bums on seats for for people to watch him. Yeah. Um. And, and in Australia, he's good for it. He, people in Australia want to see uh, an action fight, and he, yeah. he's a warp fighter. He, he doesn't want to stay there and, and counter fight you. So, he's exciting to watch. Uh, he's also one of Channel 7's greatest ever, I think, top 40 fighters. So, getting that, it's, it's quite a, it's a good reputation. Um, which leaves, uh, who, who else did you mention? Um, I think that was it. Um, yeah, Yod, um, Compatch Lex, Samapetch, Stamp, we've talked about Stamp. Oh, um, 
one fighter I was keen to ask whatever happened to him a, a few years ago. Um, I, I there was a guy I actually went and watched him fight at um, Lumpini Yodzilla. Yep. Yeah. He he was a special kid. Uh, we actually Timo uh, Roos from Muay Thai has produced a video on him uh, probably about two or three years ago. Whereas he Prem uh, brought some new fighters into the gym. Uh, from Nongkai, I think they all came from, from a, a gym that closed down up there in the Isar. And um, he just came along for the ride. Um, so he came down with two other friends, and he decided to try while while they're here at Fairtex. And he did really good. He he had such an amazing kick, um, a very quick brain, and uh, it didn't take long until he had to fight for a belt in Patia, and he won the Tepsit belt. So the next uh, stage after that is to go fight in Bangkok. So um, he took some good tough fights straight away in in Mumpini, and he was knocking people out. Um, it it wasn't within like uh, the, t- the style and technique Mumpini look for. Mm. They want scorers, but he was knocking out bigger opponents with elbows. You know, he was he was super special to watch. But uh, as as his profile started growing. So did his head, unfortunately, and and his ego got a bit heavy, and he started making some poor life life decisions, and uh, probably two or three times we had to rope him in and, and sort of say to him, look, you're fighting for your family here. Um, maybe you should consider making your, your decisions a lot smarter. And, and he didn't really, so we, we gave him some time off, and um, he came back, and he was super red-hot keen, and he just could not get back to the way he was. Like, he was still fighting well, but it's not just the fight. You know, it is more so uh, what's going on outside the ring that, that that Vertex does look after their fighters for. And we've since helped him. He He's retired from fighting in, in Thailand, which is really sad. Um, but he's moved on to gyms in Malaysia, uh, Team X in Malaysia, and now he's in Hong Kong or China. So... <clears throat> Sad that he can't fight again in Mumpini, but he, he knows he's made some terrible decisions there. Uh, but at least he's got a good long lease in life now, and he's got a job with Fairtex somewhat in uh, overseas gyms. Oh, that's good. Nice little story. Um, now, how many trainers has Fairtex currently have? Because I must admit, um, when I saw them last, they... For, for trainers, they seem to be quite fit and looking in pretty good shape, the majority of them, because uh, I know like you know a lot of Thai gyms you go to, they're well past their prime and training's the furthest thing that they do when you look at their bodies, but um, a lot of your trainers seem to be still fairly well um, like looked after and in shape. Yeah, a lot of them are actually still current fighters, so mm. um, in between holding pads, you'll probably see them fighting at uh, Max Muay Thai. Um, it is a, it's a good mix because we do have a couple of older trainers there. Uh, Crew Sison, like I said before, he's he's been there since inception. Um, so you do need that balance of uh, old school smarts and yep. the newer fighters, the younger, are still currently fighting trainers, uh, youth, and um, obviously styles have changed over the years. So it's a good mix. I think we've got around 10 guys on the books. So having like six rings, you, you do need to fill those rings up with students and fighters. Yeah. Um, so you do, you do need a lot of trainers, always on the lookout for trainers. Um, Prem's got a network, and the, the trainers have got a network throughout Thailand of finding trainers. So um, generally, one of the trainers at the gym will speak to a friend, and, and they'll speak to another friend, and they'll suggest someone, and then they'll turn up to Fertex, uh, they'll train, and they'll trial for a week or so. If they foot the bill, they'll stay behind generally. I think that's the way it happens. Is um is little A still there with his always getting his little lines and swells cutting his head? <laughs> A is actually currently in Russia at the moment for uh, a sponsored gym over there. Um, the hair has since gone, mate. So <laughs> he can't do those stencils anymore. Uh, yeah. He used to have some pretty exuberant and excessive hairstyles, but due to his balding problem, uh, I think he sort of turned it down. <laughs> Uh, now, mate, um, one thing, I'm sure you've got a few good stories here. Um, 
being based in Patea, the city can often get a bad rap, um, and with it sometimes can bring some shady or interesting people, shall we say. Have there ever been um, any instances where people have been told not to come back to the gym because they don't fit in uh, with the culture of what the gym is trying to put out? Um, I, I guess there is. A, obviously, with living in Padia, everyone's got a got their own idea about what it's like. Obviously, it's uh, it's like a sex capital of the world for Asia. Um, <laughs> but uh, for certain foreign students who want to come and train and they they, they know the Fairtex brand and they want to see Yod, they'll, they'll turn up to the gym with full intentions, very good intentions at the time, but as they get worn down, uh, the training gets very hard, they seem to frequent bars and they find out how pretty Thai girls are and then they get stuck at Walking Street for a week. So <laughs> um, it, it's, it's pretty hard. Uh, I've seen a few guys that have come with great intentions and they go home with no families, they're destroyed. It's it is sad. You've got to be. It, it's good to be a free mind, but you've also. Most people they go for a goal, so. Yeah. Patea can bring out the worst in a man. Uh, I can't say from personal experience because uh, clearly I've got a job back in Australia that I need to go back to, and obviously I want to start a family too. But um, the crime, sometimes corruption, does work. So. <laughs> the local police are quite entertaining. Where they used to pull me over before, I just keep riding past them now. I just wait. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I don't have anything overly juicy for you. We've never had problems personally with any customers or, or clients that have come to the gym. We're, we're very blessed in that. Yeah. Um, we get a, a, a good mix of people from Russia, Slovak Republic. We get a lot of Australians come. Uh, a lot of English, um, so yeah, we're we're lucky in the respect that we've got such a big uh, global buzz that we can get some good students there with with respect. Uh, I, I guess I've got one story. I guess I've probably seen it a thousand times where uh, a guy wants to come fight for Fairtex, you know, and and then so we'll go, okay, we'll get in the ring and do five rounds with this guy, and we'll give him to our hardest trainer, and and we'll, and we'll try and push him right. as far as he'll go. When they, they sort of last two rounds, you know, and they die, it's like, I guess we've got our answer, you can't come and fight. So, <laughs> yeah. um, there, are, there are certain people that do that, and there are people that want to come to the gym and want to beat up Yod, which is um, which is a bit sad and disappointing, because we used to do a lot of privates for Yod, yeah. but since a few heavy-handed egomaniacs want to come in and, and test themselves, um, he doesn't necessarily do it anymore, and the price might have gone up to do that. So, um, we would advise you if you do come to Fairtex, be yourself, be respectful, and try not to beat up Yod how if you that, can. Anyway, how has that worked out for the people that have tried to put it on Yod? Not good. Um, not good. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it, obviously, he never goes full power on anyone, but uh, hey. His half power is most people's full power. He's a natural athlete, so um, he, he pushes them, but he'll also stand back and he'll he'll play the game and such. Yeah. Yeah. Well, John Wayne Parr did say that out of all the people he's fought, um, Yod Sinclair was definitely the one, the hardest opponent he's ever had, and he's he's fought him three times, so he's not going to fight him again. I think he said three times is more than enough. <laughs> 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 I don't know anyone who'd want to fight him three times. <laughs> um, now, being being based at Fairtex for a while now, what are the, some of the key differences you've seen and noticed um, in the growth of Muay Thai over the years in Thailand and in particularly Pattaya? Um, with the introduction of Max Muay Thai, it's uh, it's brought a, a different style in now. Um, you'll see. Uh, more active fights, people that can only walk forward, no no backward fighting, um, which is good for entertainment. Uh, I'm guessing for the, the you know the purist who wants to see the Lumpini style fights, it's a bit different. Um, unfortunately, the bigger stadiums don't have the, well, for me, they don't have the bigger buzz anymore. It's the international style fighting and in big international promotions that that sort of um, have evolved a lot. 
Whereas Lumpini now are changing their style a bit. They've got like uh, Kiet Pet, Super Fight, and, and they're holding super shows, uh, yeah. which is still great to watch. I, I love watching stadium stuff. Um, but it, it's evolved now. Even though the standard at Max is, is high, uh, it is generally a uh, more viewer friendly way of watching fights. Um, yeah, that's that's the way it's sort of going in this area. And with one championship coming in now and uh, Glory for us as well, we're one of the sponsors for Glory. Um, more exciting fights, that's what you know, people want to see. Surely Max must have a. Um a um a deal with like all the chinese tourist companies because i swear man like i've been to max heaps of times and we'll get in there and half an hour before the show you look around and there's it's the stadium's half half full and then literally 10 minutes 15 minutes before it starts it's just whoom, all these chinese buses and tourists just come and they just fill the stadiums and i reckon if it wasn't for the chinese tourists they would only have the stadiums half filled yeah that's there's no secret there um Definitely the Chinese influx is, yeah, Max is sustained by the Chinese. And, yeah, the amount of buses that go in that city just for Max Muay Thai and the sex shows, um, it's a different story, um, is just amazing. There's probably about three, 400 buses a day that go in there. Um, so Max has got very good marketing and social media um, going on there. They've, they've picked the Chinese to uh, sustain their, their show. Yeah. And in order for that to happen, they're getting a good show on the Sunday. So <clears throat> generally, there wasn't that many people going to the midweek shows, but now it's picked up again. Yeah, and they're smart with their um, with the way they do it because if they've got a Chinese fighter, they'll put him at the very, very end, so the Chinese have to stay. Yes, it's it's play, it's clever. Uh, yeah. The Thais now how to market money. Let's let's face it, they're very <laughs> smart and worry about their money. <laughs> certainly, they certainly are. And, um, like, so being an advisor to Prem, you obviously get to travel to the shows that he can't make. Um, what are the good and bad things about it? I'm guessing there's probably not many bad things about it. Um, it is actually a lot of pressure, uh, taking a tie overseas. Uh, they're very superstitious, as you all well know, and I try to keep their, their, their fight week the same as what they do in Thailand, so... That's down from the red cordial they drink, which is Blue Boy, uh, to the food they eat straight off after they get off the scales. I'm, I'm very particular about looking after them in a way that they are used to. Um, yeah. Fortunately for me, uh, uh, Rebellion in Melbourne uh, is a very big Thai community there, and uh, I take the boys to the Thai markets, uh, and I get them exactly what they would need for their fight week. Um, with that being said, um, I'm, I, I've done pretty good at it so far. Uh, fortunately, I think I've lost one fight in the last couple of years that I've gone to for Rebellion. And that was against the man you last, I think, interviewed, which was Sing Pao. Oh, Sing Pao, yeah. Um, he beat uh, Sam Pet in the, the four-man man, eight-man final. Eight-man yeah. final. Yeah, um, last year. But generally, we've had a very successful standing with Rebellion. Uh, and, and saying that Rebellion is a remarkable show too. Um, Zainaji is a marketing, promoting genius. He, he's, done, he's done some very special work there and we're very happy to work with him because he's bringing the, the, the level of Rebellion up and up. And I get to go to a lot of cool promotions and I don't believe, and I honestly mean this, uh, I don't believe there's a better run and... 100% Muay Thai show than Rebellion. So kudos to Mr. Sai, and I'll take my $100 tip after this. Thank you. <laughs> but, um, yeah, uh, there are no downfalls. Uh, obviously, if, if a fighter loses and we've gone all that way and we come back, the trip's pretty hard to come back. Yeah. But generally, a few sang songs or some chung beer on the way home sort of gets the spirits back up again for the boys when they do happen to lose, which at Fairtex, they don't particularly lose that much, so I'm generally a happy guy. <laughs> yeah. Um, now, as we mentioned before, like all your um, foreigners, um, of your sponsored foreigners are all signed with 1FC, um, and it's now a global brand that seems to be getting bigger and bigger by the week. 
Um, they've got multiple fight disciplines on the show, um, and it doesn't stand for all that macho, bracho, argy bargy bullshit that the USC seem to promote. So give me your take on 1FC promotion and where you see it heading in the future. Uh, bottom line, it, it was a necessity that had to happen. It's a, it's a, fr- it's a breath of fresh air. Um, Chatri knows from personal experience, obviously the CEO of uh, One Championship, he knows from personal experience what the meaning of Pilates is, and especially for the Asian people who are involved in it. Um, it is from it is a very, very professional show. There are people there that have their role and they do it properly. Um, and, and they've done it with Asian insight too. So um, I'm so happy it's it's building. Um, whether it gets bigger than the USC, I don't know. I, I hope it does. Yeah. Um, but in time, the matchups will get stronger. Uh, they're, they're adding more people to the roster all the time. They've just added Eddie Alvarez. Yep. So that's going to bring the level up. Um, but yeah, one championship is just an amazing show. It's uh, full credit to, to Corn Chattery. Um, it, it, it's something that needed to happen for Asian fight sports, in particular. Um, mixed martial arts because the way it's being played out in America is it's very unprofessional and you just saw from our last show the, the hijinks what happens for during and after a fight so uh, the big difference there is one championship will not let you get in those situations they they will keep the two fighters apart for the entire fight week um, they won't do face off um, weigh ins and they just don't want any of that. They're trying to market uh, very respectful martial arts in the face of Asia. Yeah, I um I watched a, a weigh in. Um, I think it was tri- it was triumphant series or something like that. A Muay Thai event in um uh, or a promotion in America, and I was watching the weigh ins, and I just thought like these people are morons. Like because they were having not the actual not the actual promoters themselves but like they had what the, they had the weigh-ins and then they were taking photos but they were just like oh, I don't want to sound like I'm too I don't want to sound racist but it's like typical American just like yeah like all in the all in the photos and it's a Muay Thai event it's not an MMA event it's a Muay Thai event so they've done their weigh-ins they've done their face off and then they're all taking photos and they're all like yeah like this and I'm just yeah. thinking, I'm just thinking mate this 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 is not what a Muay Thai event should be run like I think there there is a word. I think it's called Americanism. I think that's what happened. <laughs> and, <laughs> but, then, uh, yeah. and then, like another instance, um, like with that promotion, I watched it. I think it was this year. Uh, Eddie Farrell from Australia fought uh, uh, Nutapol, an ex used to be a Fairtex fighter. I think it was. And yeah. the ring, mate, the ring was small as it was, but they had two security guards in the ring while they were announcing the fighters and. They couldn't even do a proper Y crew because these security guards. It's it's like, mate, it's not USC. You don't need fucking ten security guards surrounding each other, you know. Yeah. And they they ended up doing a, a just a. They end up basically just sealing the ring. And it's like, what? And I'm just thinking, like, why are you even standing in the ring, mate? Like, this is Muay Thai. You don't need to like get out. I never noticed that, but yeah, that's that's quite disrespectful, really, isn't it? I, yeah, there should be there should be three does, people. Uh, in, Three people in the ring, the two fighters and the referee. That's it. Get out. Yeah, oh, I'm, I'm guessing they'll look at that next time. Oh, you'd, you'd hope so, but judging by the uh, the weigh-ins, I don't think so. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, so, so what is it about the 1FC promotion that appeals to, to you and Fairtex when representing a global company like that? Oh, it's, it's a huge label. Um, the, the viewership of... Uh, one championship is of a is, is massive. It, it covers all of Asia, yeah. Not just Southeast Asia, Asia, and uh, Australasia as well, due to the representation of Australian and New Zealand fighters on the show now. So, it it truly is a one global brand. Uh, whatever they say it is, it, it actually is. So, um, having your your your, your logo Fairtex on the ropes or on the gloves, it's seen by millions of people so yep. that, that's a big push for Fairtex uh, so they've pushed through Asia with that um, with Glory as well they've, they've gone through Europe so um, it's only win-win for us but 
one championship, it, it'll be around for a long time. Um, they'll keep signing good athletes, and it will get better and stronger. See, with your with your Muay Thai fighters that are signed to One FC, is is that an exclusive deal? Are they only allowed to fight for One FC, or can they can they take other fights from other promotions here and there? Um, with, we've got yeah, with with a few of our guys, that one championship's quite reasonable. I think uh, if you give them a, a fair amount of time and notice, yeah, if you want to fight on another promotion, as long as it's not like a rival like uh, Glory or Kunlun or something like that. If it's not a broadcasted international show, they'll generally let you do it. Yeah. Hence what has happened with Samoa Pet fighting in Rebellion. Um, yeah, we're allowed to do that as such. So they are reasonable. Um, I think even with Josh Tonner, uh, he's fighting soon. He gave them notice about fighting in Australia and having yeah. a show there. They're very flexible. So is, uh, is our good friend Andrew Miller, will we still see him on MX from time to time? Uh, MX is unfortunately now defunct. Uh, oh, you're joking. Yeah, that went down about, oh, I think probably a month ago now. Oh, um, shit. Andrew is actually signed to one championship, and yeah. he's got the biggest challenge of his life. Um, I believe he's fighting the best stadium fighter at the moment, which is Yodlek Pet. Um, he's a very, very strong and tough man, Yodlek Pet, but we believe we've got a good formula to beat him, and I'm pretty confident Andrew's going to smoke him. So, yeah, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be rooting for him because, man, I used to love watching him um, on MX when he'd come out and they'd have the Isar music playing and he'd just be like coming out dancing, like just didn't even look like he was about to have a fight, you know, like looked like he was about to go clubbing. <laughs> <laughs> he is a very uncompromising person, Andrew. Uh, a great character at the gym. Uh, it's all taken, I think. Pretty much everyone in the gym a long time to understand what he's actually saying. His accent <laughs> is great. but we we just we started off by nodding and you know the, you know you just go along with the story, but now we understand him. <laughs> it will backfire if you if he actually asked you a question and you just go yeah, and then he's like, so what's the answer? <laughs> I didn't mean that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, mate. Um, so. What fights has Fairtex got lined up for Yod, Samapetch, Compechlex, um, and Stamp that you can tell us about? Um, they're all, obviously, as you know, we all, we've said before, they're all one contract fighters. Um, Samapet has a fight in November next month. Uh, we can't announce it yet, I'm very sorry. Uh, it will be, I think it's in the either the Philippines or Jakarta. Yep. Um, Johan Dre, I think he will fight next month on the same card. We can't announce his fight uh, either. Well, it has come to terms, so there's a fight lock in there. Yep. Andrew, as we said before, he's fighting Yodlak Pet. Um, that will be in Singapore. Uh, luckily for me, I'll get to go to that one. Uh, that is a huge card. I don't think I've seen a card like that ever. Uh, and you've got Giorgio Petrosian on a card, and he's not even yeah. main event. He's, yep. That's a huge card, um, and some very high-end ties fighting on it. Um, I think uh, Oliver actually has got a WMO title in MBK this week, I think uh, next week, 31st. So he's fighting for his first world title. Um, Compet Lek will fight in a very high-end show in the next two weeks. I cannot disclose who. Yeah. Um, I think that's generally it. Unfortunately, we just can't give out uh, you know, definite names yet, but they're all uh, going to be announced very soon. So That's right. So they've, all, they've all got shows by the end of the year. Yeah, all on shows, generally in November, end of November. All right, no worries. I'll, uh, I won't press you for any further details there. Um, now, if anyone uh, wants to get hold of you uh, or they want to follow Fed or they want to follow the Fairtex fighters, or they want more info on the Fairtex gym um, and its programs, how can they get hold of you and, and get more info about all that? Yeah, 100%. Um, pretty sure everyone in the face of the earth has Facebook, so if you'd like to jot down Fairtex Training Center, you'll find us there. It's quite easy. We've got around 50,000 likes and viewers there, so uh, we've just recently hired a new social media guy, Matt Lucas, He's controlling all of that now, and he's put out some very good content. Um, so I suggest even if you want to send messages to us, we can read Thai and English. We're quite basic. So message us if you want to know what the deals and packages are that can come. you can come and train with us. We'll 
gladly help you out there. Uh, once again, we're not just uh, Muay Thai, we're MMA as well. So Jiu-Jitsu, um, MMA, we can, we, can, we can help you out there. We've got accommodation on site. Um, and we're in probably the best area of the city. Now we've got a brand new shopping center across the road, which is Terminal 21. Oh, yeah. Um, so you can get your training and bring your girl. She's going to love it. She, you go to train, she can go across the road and go shopping. Um, <laughs> It's a win-win. It's a one-stop shop, yeah. <laughs> so how's your tie? Is it, is it on point? Are you, can you speak fluently? I'll never be able to speak fluently um, due to my Australian accent. I, <laughs> I, can, I, can do, I can do basic greetings. I can hold down a, a conversation now. Um, it's just a bit hard with most of the Nuck Boy being from Isan, so you're trying to learn their dialect. Yeah. You're learning someone's dialect from like uh, Southern Thai ladies. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. It's pretty hard. Yeah, I'm I'm on the same boat. Especially like when you, because you you're you're in Thailand for a period of time, and then you go back to Australia, and then if you're not constantly speaking it all the time, you forget it. And as soon as you come back, you're like, oh shit, I, f- I forgot like what I picked up the other the other month. Exactly. So you've got to keep fresh on it. And unfortunately for me, most of the Thai Nuk Moi and my girlfriend only want to speak English because they want to learn, and I'm like, I need to learn too. So <laughs> it's, it's always an ongoing argument. No, that's it, mate. Um, and, and last but not least, anyone you want to thank or give a shout-out to? Oh, my friend in Melbourne, Sai Naji, for sure. Uh, I'm looking forward to his last show this year. It's it's going to be a Roots event. So yep. big uh, hello to Sai in, in Melbourne. Uh, clearly the, one of the best shows, not just because we're, we're sponsoring it, but for what he does for Australia, he champions some very good Australian fighters. Um, and, he, and he markets a great show. So, big hello to Mr. Naji. All the best for your last show of the year. All right, mate. Well, uh, thanks very much for the chat. I've uh, greatly appreciated. And uh, cop and cop, Jergun. <laughs> thanks, Mark. <laughs> All right, chat you soon. The king, the lives of great warriors, revered and notorious. Infamous and legendary, that to me is glorious. Come kick it, still talk some shit with me. I'll ask so you can answer and explain to me the history I had to throw a vicious knee. I got a passion for the heart, I ain't limbs, I'm just asking from the heart. So as I conclude this interview, thanks so much for sitting through. Loved all the fighters and the folks that listen, this for you.